good morning students welcome back to english session in the previous session we have discussed about prose number 7 on saying please by ag gardiner who is known as alpha of the plow so children in the previous session what did we discuss we have discussed about saying please thank you sorry actually these are these show our manners but they are not uh, actually compelled by the law they are not the words that are compulsory that the people should say so it is after all depends on the person's manners moods right so till third paragraph what we discussed about we have discussed about the story of a lived man who did not say uh, sorry the the passenger who did not say top please and because of that the lift man threw him out of the lift and he lost his job why lost his job because he he behaved against the law but the passenger did not behave according against the law because he said top and he was not uh, compulsory it was not there for him to say so please right so many a times we 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 can uh, discuss about the offenses right and the poet has given some examples to supplement that if a burglar breaks into his house and he knocks him down then it will not be an offense or the person who physically attacks him and uh, if we counter attack the person then that would not also be a offense but if you trouble the people without any reason that would be offense and saying sorry and please are not administered in a law there is no law that governs our social civ civilities right or our speech or our tilt of our eyebrows and all our moods and manners otherwise the poet thinks that there will be the river of blood everywhere and everybody's fists will be engaged means everybody will come to fight so let us continue from paragraph number 4 this right but though we are bound to endorse the verdict against the lift man most people will have a certain sympathy with him while it is true that there is no law that compels us to say please there is a social practice much older and much more sacred than any law which enjoins us to be civil children let me explain very carefully listen every word right but though we are bound to endorse what do you mean by endorse endorse means support write down all the words i told you right the verdict means what is the verdict criminal case huh? against the lift man we are bound to support the verdict case why we have to support the law because we cannot escape from the law no man can escape from the law even the president of the country the first citizen of the country also has to follow certain laws right most people will have a certain sympathy with him many people may think that uh, the, they will support lift man but actually we have to support the law because he has done a blunder mistake what was that mistake he threw the passenger out of the lift that was a blunder mistake that does not support any law why only because he did not say him please while it is true that there is no law that compels us to say please there is a social practice much older and much more sacred than any law which enjoins us to be civil actually enjoins what do you mean by enjoins that commands that orders us actually there is no such law anywhere right that forces us that we must say please to anybody there is no such law but it is a older practice it is a older system that makes us more civilized right saying sorry please i told you thank you please sorry these are magic words right there is no law that we have to use the words but they make our life more meaningful more civilized and more sophisticated isn't it so always follow the law and not the emotions all the times so you cannot carry yourself by the emotions that is what the author gardiner wants us to do at the first requirement of civility children civility means what nobility good behavior good manners politeness is that we should acknowledge a service and we must know acknowledge means understand the service what is our duty if you understand your duty 
then definitely this please and thank you will come to your mouth automatically please and thank you are the small change with which we play, pay our way as social beings children using these words make us really a social being because aristotle uh, already told that man is a social animal right we cannot live without company right we need people to laugh to cry to fight to share our feelings with so we cannot stay alone like other animals so man is a social animal and these uh, please and thank you words make us more social they are the little courtesies courtesy means politeness right courtesy by which we keep the machine of life oiled sweetly and this machine of life needs oil and these thank you sorry and please words are like the oil that make our machine go smoothly life's machine goes smoothly with these words if you are using rude words your machine will have a lot of trouble right machine in the sense your life they put our intercourse intercourse means communication upon the basis of a friendly and cooperation and easy give and take instead of on the basis of superiors dictating to inferiors children many a times you have seen the superior superior means those who are very stronger in position greater in position like boss they are always torturing their subordinates their inferiors those who are holding the low positions they are not treating them friendly they are not using the words sorry thank you please for their subordinates right but the author says that if everybody uses these words the life everyone's life will become more meaningful more happy sorry happier and more meaningful isn't it it is a very vulgar mind that would wish to command where he can have the service of asking and have it with willingness and good feeling instead of resentment actually there are people the there are people who are always commanding the author says them their mind is very vulgar vulgar means very uh, mean very rubbish very uh, you can say dishonest because where you can ask why you command many times you see the people they are commanding you give me a glass of water instead of, of that they can ask can you give me a glass of water so this is the best quality can you give me a glass of water please so see how so what is the difference between the two statements i uttered one is commanding and, uh, and the other one is requesting so which one is more pleasant obviously the one that is uh, requesting will be more pleasant so make polite requests as much as possible talk to the people very politely gently and you can ultimately win the their favor and once you win their favor your task will be easy paragraph number fifth sorry one more thing i want to tell you that and i have it willingness and good feeling instead of resentment resentment means hatred right uh, not the state of not being satisfied with something the people nowadays are very much resentful they are not happy with the things so how you can express your resentfulness in a polite way even though you are not happy with someone's work you can express in a very polite manner fifth paragraph i should like to feature in this connection my friend the polite conductor actually the poet is giving one example of his friend who had been a conductor bus conductor right by this discriminating title discriminating means uh, making a difference actually the poet has used one profession here whenever we are writing about any profession even though we are writing good thing or a very bad thing about that profession it is not applicable actually because we are insulting that profession isn't it so when we are writing anything about the people about their profession we must be very careful so the poet is very much Uh, you know keen to tell us about the profession that discriminating title means a different title he is using conductor i do not intend to suggest a rebuke to conductors generally actually he is not saying that other conductors are mean his friend is only the good conductor right his his intention is not to just point out only one person right on the contrary i am disposed to think that there are few classes of men who come through the ordeal of very trying 
calling better than bus conductors do. Actually, there are people who suffer a lot in the bus. When you are traveling in a bus as a passenger, you suffer a lot because of the ill treatment of many of the conductors. They do not support you at all, right? Here and there you will meet an unpleasant specimen who regards the passengers as his natural enemies and you may find at least one conductor. The point is not, uh, actually he is not remarking any particular conductor but some of the specimen copies are there. Everywhere they will be there obviously. So one at least you will find, I actually children, even I when I was going to college that time we were traveling in a bus and we obviously used to meet different types of conductors and there was one conductor who was very much, I am using the word very cruel. So whenever we used to see him, we were actually terrified, we were afraid of him because his words were very harsh and his treatment to the passengers was very, uh, you can say, uh, clumsy treatment or very mean treatment he used to give. And on the contrary, there was one more conductor who was very pleasant, who was very polite and were very friendly with him. Why were very friendly with that conductor and why not with the other one? Because obviously the difference is clear. We love the people whose tongue is sweet, right? So here there was, uh, here there are some other specimens of conductors who treat their passengers as their natural enemies only. As soon as passengers enter the bus, they will treat them as enemies. As creatures whose purpose on the bus is to cheat him and who can only be kept reasonably honest by a loud voice and an aggressive man. And some conductors, they have made it their, made it their mind that passengers are their enemies and the passengers can be only controlled by raising the voice. And aggression, aggression means attacking nature, right? And they even think that the passengers come to cheat them. Uh, maybe there may be some passengers who cheat the conductors. Maybe some passengers are very rude, even I have experienced that. But it doesn't mean that all the passengers are rude, all the passengers are cheat. It's not possible. But the conductors actually maybe they are troubled by their profession. All the time they have to meet different types of people. So maybe you know they, they also might have got fed up with this profession many times. If you are doing your profession as a duty, your profession becomes wonderful, isn't it? But this type is rare rather than it is used to be. Actually, the conductor whom the author met one day is really a rare. Rare means very rare to find. Uncommon, you can say. Right? Otherwise, you don't find such type of conductors. I fancy the public owes much to be underground railway company. Fancy means I imagine the public owes much to the underground railway company, which also runs the buses for insisting on a certain standard of civility in its servants and taking care that the standard is observed. Actually, there are some, if you travel by railway or if you travel by, uh, if you have traveled by plane, then you will come to know that the air hostess, right? or uh, the people who are attending you, they are very polite, their expressions, you know, their facial expressions especially, they make you travel, right? They make your journey very comfortably, they take utmost care that you are not uh, uh, suffer actually, you do not suffer. So, this, uh, in some public sector, uh, actually such system is not prevalent yet, but in private sectors, you will find the people, the employees are taking much care because they want more and more business. Even in government sector, they have started this policy. So, in doing this, it not only makes things pleasant for the traveling public, but performs an important social service. When the, the conductor or any people, driver, conductors or those who are attending you, if they are treating you very politely, friendly, obviously your journey becomes very pleasant and at the same time the service also becomes very smooth and their job is done very carefully, very successfully, right? Sixth paragraph, it is, it is not therefore with any feeling of friendliness to conductors as a class that I pay a tribute to a particular member of that class and the author, the ordinary is 
is citing one example here of one of the particular conductor whom he met and that type of person would be very rare to find, right? I first became conscious of his existence one day when I jumped on a bus. Jumped onto a bus means entered a bus and found that I had left home without any money in my pocket. Children, this, this happens many times with some people. They forget their wallet and they enter the bus and they start checking for their wallet and they come to know that their wallet is kept at home, left at home. So what would you do? Many times the conductor will obviously throw that passenger out, right? But let us see what does happen with our narrator. Everyone has had the experience and knows the feeling, everyone of us. The mixed feeling which the discovery arises, you are annoyed because you look like a fool at the best and like a knave at the worst. Children, why? Knave means uh, servant. Children, when you don't have money in your pocket, you first, for the people, you are looking like a fool and secondly, you are looking like a servant at its worst. You are a servant means you are ready to do anything because if you go to the hotel and you dine and you realize you don't have money, what would they do? They will make us clean the, wash the utensils many times. Huh? It happens many places. If you have no money, you have to serve there in the hotel. So, even though you are rich, you don't have money, right? When you don't have money in your pocket, you look like a fool and you look like a servant. Isn't it? Neo means servant. Write it down. The words, I am telling you the meanings. Neo means servant. Isn't it? You would not be at all surprised if the conductor eyed you coldly as much as to say, yes, I know that stale old trick, now then off you get. And when the conductor will give you such a scornful look, you do not get surprised because the con you know what the conductor is going to say you. Because I already I told you there are people who fool the conductor saying that I forgot my pocket, I lost my pocket, but what could the conductor do? Because he is also an employer, he has to pay for your ticket then. How is it possible? Then the conductors will tell, I know your stale old trick. Stale means opposite of fresh, right? Stale food, you know that. So I know your old trick and now get off from the bus, get out. Conductor will obviously say, he thought when conductor gave him a, conductor darted him a look, casted him a look. And even if the conductor is a good fellow and lets you down easily, you are faced with the necessity of going back and the inconvenience perhaps of missing your train or your engagement. Children, many a times what happens, sometimes okay, the conductor may be a good person. He will politely let you get down of the bus, but what would happen? Next problem would be, how will you manage to go to the bus stand again? How would you get the train or you may be missing the engagement or wedding ceremony, right? So these are the other problems that you may face. Isn't it? But this time, what's author condition? Listen. Now, what is author's condition? Listen carefully, my dear friends. <clears throat> Having searched my pockets in vain. In vain means without success. Huh? He searched his pocket. You do that even though to ensure whether in some corner you might find one coin at least, right? You start searching. But he searched his pocket again and again and without any success for stray coppers. Stray copper means coins. Copper coins were there. This is a very old story. And an honest face as I could assume that I couldn't pay the fare and must go back for money. The author showed his face, innocent face to the conductor so that he felt the conductor will show some sympathy, show some pity on him. And he showed his face as if he is unable to pay the fare because he's, he did not speak a word but he started searching his pocket. Conductor realized this person has forgotten money, right? Oh, you needn't get off, that's all right, said he. All right, said I. When the conductor said, oh man, don't worry, don't get off. Author actually stood up to get out of the bus because he knew that what would be the next reaction of the conductor. But the conductor stopped him from doing so and he said, it's okay, all right. The surprised author asked him, all right, but I haven't a copper on me, but I don't have money to pay. 
Oh, I'll book you through, he replied. Where do you want to go? Dry. Dry means do you want to go? The conductor was so helping, you know, so consider, considerate and so, you know, friendly that he said, Oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll book your ticket myself. Tell me where are you going? And he handled his bundle of tickets with the air of a man who was prepared to give me a ticket for anywhere from the bank to Hong Kong. Actually, the conductor was so confident that he was ready to pay him the ticket to even to Hong Kong. Actually, he was not going to Hong Kong, but it is exaggeration, right? It means that he was mentally prepared to give him ticket to any place. Maybe if it is 400, 500 rupees also. Is it possible nowadays for any conductor to give you the ticket when you don't have money? They do not leave a single rupee from you, my dear friends. This is my experience. <clears throat> I am not telling about all the conductors, but some of the species. And some conductors, as I already told, they are very, very good conductors. Right? They are very honest. I said it was very kind of him and told him where I wanted to go and as he gave me the ticket I said but where shall I send the fare? Fare means that charge, money. The conductor gave him the ticket. Now the author is worried about he doesn't know his address. At least nowadays you have Paytm, Phone Pay, Google Pay. You can easily pay the money. Nowadays you don't have to carry your money in your wallet. But this is a very old story when there were no mobile phones probably. So there was no question of Google Pay, Paytm or phone pay or Amazon pay or anything else, right? So, he asked him where shall I send the money? Postal address, money order was very common in those days, right? Oh, you'll see me someday, all right. And he said him, okay, you will meet, will meet someday, then you pay me the money. So, what kind of courtesy that man is showing to author? The conductor's courtesy is really mind-blowing heart touching for the author, he said cheerfully. The conductor did not say angrily. The conductor said cheerfully because he was voluntarily, willingly he was helping him, not by force. As he turned to go, the conductor turned to go to other passengers and he said, you can pay any day when we will meet. And then luckily my fingers still wandering in the corners of my pocket, lighted on a shilling and uh, the account was squared. Actually, luckily he found one coin. Luckily, huh? when he had a ticket, he found, a, when the conductor had gone a distance, he found one coin. But the fact did not lessen the glow of pleasure, which so good natured, An action had given me, actually he had a one coin, but he could not dare to go to the conductor and say him that I have money for the ticket because he was really impressed by his good nature, right? And this is very r rare my dear friends, nowadays it is very rare to find such type of people, right? A one more paragraph I will say. A few days later, my most sensitive toe was trampled on rather heavily as I sat reading on the top of a bus. Actually, another moment when the author went to a bus, someone trampled, crushed his toe. Sensitive toe means maybe having some wound or some problem, we can say. And that was trampled and just imagine when someone crushes your toe. And you are totally unaware of that. You are reading the paper in a bus. I looked up with some anger and more agony. Agony means pain. Actually, the author looked up to see who that uh, fool or who that careless person was. And with pain, he shouted. He screamed with pain and looked up to see who that careless person was. And saw my friend of the cheerful countenance. And who that person was? He saw that. Same person with a cheerful countenance. Countenance means face. Write down the word. Countenance means, the word is read as countenance. Face. His face was very, very happy. Right? Sorry, sir, he said. That person immediately said sorry because he did it 
unknowingly, right? I know these are heavy boots. Got them because my own feet get trod on so much, and now I am trading on other people's. Actually, what answer the conductor gave? Actually, the conductor had experienced this trampling many times. Many people have crushed his own toes, and so he has decided he will wear a very heavy boot to take a revenge on the passengers. I told you that there are people, such type of people would be there, isn't it? So I, I don't think this would be the same conductor. This is another conductor, uh, isn't it? The earlier conductor was very cheerful and very considerate, very helpful. And this, see this conductor. This conductor is a different fellow, right? He said, "Sorry, sir, but I am wearing this boot purposely because there are people who trod on much. Trod means they are walking on my feet, so I am now walking on their feet. I am crushing their feet, and now I am." Trading on other people. Trading means walking on other people's feet deliberately. Hope I didn't hurt you. I'm sorry if I hurt you, sir. He had hurt me, but he was so nice about it that I assured him he hadn't. He was so actually author got hurt, but he explained in such a way that the author told him that I did not get hurt. Don't worry, because his explanation was so beautiful. You know. After this. Right. Uh, we'll stop here. So, what did you learn today? I hope you learnt about the different examples of people, about how they use their courtesy, how they behave with the people politely or rudely. There are two examples of conductors. You can differentiate, con contrast between them. Right. I hope you would like the one who is helpful and the one and and you don't like the one who is troublesome for the people. right so thank you sorry and please are the magic words please start using them read the lessons complete your works on time and send your homeworks timely thank you for watching my video have a good day